Hi, my name is Enrique, and I'm the producer at Distortion Games, and today I'm going to present to you Blood Oath, When the Sword Rises. There are two main modes, Free Mode and Arcade Mode. In Arcade Mode, you will be able to join a quick match where you'll find classic game modes such as Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, Last Man Standing, and many others. But let's talk about Free Mode, because that's what our Kickstarter is all about. Blood Oath is a medieval first and third person hack and slash combat game. And we wanted to focus on a combat that was adaptable and easy to play that you could change to fit your playstyle. As such, you will be able to choose multiple options depending on the weapon you're wielding, giving you a unique style and look. In free mode, you will be able to experience a world ruled by players where you can find your own faction and kingdoms or conquer those of others. There will be three basic types of professions, gatherer, craftsman and soldier. Gatherers or peasants are those dedicated to gathering resources. Craftsmen will transform these resources into weapons, armor and other items. And soldiers will be dedicated to maintaining armies and waging war. Professions will have a leveling system in which you will progress until you unlock new improvements and skills. And at max level, you will have the possibility of achieving prestige, making yourself a knight if you are a soldier, or a merchant, or even an architect, which will allow you to expand and modify cities. If these do not appeal to you, you can also become a mercenary. This will offer you the opportunity to fight for the ones who pay you the most including factions, guilds or other players. The idea of the mercenary is to give the player and the game more versatility. They can move their camp, reassembling it anywhere on the map, making them very useful to launch any campaign closer to the action. Our intention with free mode is to provide a strategic approach to the players, giving them the opportunity of participating in government and in battles. In battle, you can act as a commander and tactician, or as a fierce warrior. So how is the government system organized? Well, it's composed by counts, dukes and kings, where every nobleman has permadeath, in which if they die ten times, they die permanently, and their heir will succeed them. If the king dies, the throne is lost, and a new election will be held. The dead lord's direct vassals are the electors of the new lord. For example, all dukes are electors of the new king. This system will allow new people to be introduced into politics, and nobles will not feel immortal, as they will need to maintain themselves in power. Defending your family and heirs is important for nobles due to the permadeath system. For other players, it will be useful as well, since you will have the opportunity to end your character and play as one of your sons or daughters. What about cities? The map will be divided in provinces. These provinces have a max of one settlement. Each province will have a series of valuable resources that will make them very attractive for creating a new village in the area. There are two ways of becoming a ruler of a city. One way is if a noble grants you a settlement or if you get there first and build your own. You can gather a group of people in resources and build your own town. If a lot of people are attracted to the town, and with the help of architects, you can build that settlement into a large city. With the help of architects, you can transform any small settlement in a metropolis. In every settlement, there will be a display board, where there will be a list of contract offers for specific jobs, like escort a trade route, or to contribute for the improvements of the city. You will be able to move to other cities by purchasing a house where you want to go, and the ruler of that area will become your new lord. Villages or cities will be ruled by counts, dukes or kings and they will ask you to defend them. But why would you defend your lord's city? The village or city is where your house is located and where your family will live and where your personal resources and belongings will be stored. Manpower is one of the most important resources of the game. This will allow you to respawn in battles and it will be provided by you and your family. Anyone can send their children to the Lord, and in return, it will become manpower. Where permadeath applies, it is important to note that you will replace one of your children, and the rest of your family will seek refuge in the Lord, and in return, they will become manpower.
Battles are planable. Commanders can meet before a battle and decide the battle plan, making indications towards the rest of the commanders, and it will be the highest ranking officer who will decide the final battle plan. If you are a player, you will receive visual indications of what the orders are. For example, attack the East Tower. This will allow the commander to coordinate the players within the battle, and it offers the possibility that we really seek. That real-world strategies can be carried out within game. In our stretch goals, we want to give the opportunity of greatly expanding the game. The Maritime expansion will open sea routes, and a new type of raid, and a very interesting resource, slaves. Slaves can be used as a workforce for resource gathering or manpower, but beware, slaves are not invulnerable. We've added guilds to our goals because we want something much deeper. In fact, our goal is for them to be similar to the East India Trading Company, having their own hierarchical system, their own troops, and the possibility to open trade routes, as well as colonizing of new territories. The Renaissance will add new professions and systems, for example, trials. Trials may be used to deliver justice to tyrannical kings or petty thieves. Anyone can host a server of the game, with their own customizations like permadeath for everyone, or having cities already built. We have announced Freemo's release in a year, but it will be released progressively, with a few systems and two cities, and expanding it from there. We really want you to try the game and see what the fighting style is like, and we encourage you to join our arcade mode open beta, which will be available starting August 28th. In addition, all our backers will have permanent access to the beta until the game's full release on Steam. We want to have all of you participating directly in the development of Blood Earth when the sword rises, to grow the game and develop it with your suggestions, to build the game hand in hand with the community, trying to listen to each of your ideas. Therefore, we invite you to participate and share all your ideas on our Discord server. We hope to see you all on August 28th in the battlefield.